Welcome to the imagery processing lecture for the mapping and analysis using UAS course. What we're going to be doing today uh, the, during this lecture. First, I'm going to start with some theory so you can understand that the photogrammetric data processing is a multi-step process. Then we're going to switch into data. So we're going to indicate the data that is needed for this processing. So for the autophoto and digital terrain model generation from aerial imagery. Uh, then uh, we're going to talk a little bit about interior and exterior orientation of the camera. And finally, the uh, good chunk of the lecture will be dedicated to describing the workflow for the geoprocessing of aerial imagery in our designated software. And we're going to be use it, using Agisoft Metasheet professionally. So the photogrammetric process. It is crucial to, to think about the photogrammetric process as a process. So it starts from the data acquisition, so from the flight or even before about the definition of the project, about thinking about what we're going to do with this data, then planning the flight and acquiring data. Then the later uh, stage that we are going to be talking about now is data processing. And afterwards, uh, there is either, either image interpretation or computation and, uh, and analysis. And we're going to be uh, talking about this in later lectures and we're going to also do this uh, by ourselves during our assignments. So what is the photogrammetric process? As I mentioned before, it starts with the flight planning. It starts all in the head of the, um, uh, with the person who is going to be uh, planning, uh, flying, planning, processing and analyzing the data. So we are on the step three right now. And also data processing is uh, divided into stages. So we're going to talk about the pre-processing stage, the main stage, so the processing, and then the lastly, after the processing, what are the results? What we, can we export after we uh, process all the data? So first, what do we get after flight mission? So we, we land and we have get our drone. In our drone, we can have a camera or if the camera is integrated, uh, we just take the SD card and we see the imagery that is in the sensor. And also the autopilot of the drone, it uh, writes a flight log. Sometimes the flight log, we're going to be talking about it more, is integrated with the imagery. Sometimes it's a separate file. In our case, we're going to also be uh, using the ground control point coordinates that were measured in the field. Fortunately, you don't have to go to the field and measure them because we pre-measured them for you. So the first, uh, the first output is the digital imagery. Here, here you can see the thumbnails of some uh, photos that we've uh, taken on the Lake Wheeler side, and there are uh, they are uh, on the SD card. So as as with the, your regular photos, family photos. Uh, you just take the SD card, plug it in the computer, and you can download your data. They can be geotagged. What, what does it mean? It means that the camera location is written into the each photo's exit file. So you can't see the exit file when you just click on the photo, but uh, each photo has this, has it hidden, like behind the scenes. It has this exit file, and you can see most of your photos that you take with your uh, with your um, uh, phone also have this your geotagged written into into them, so you can see them later on the map. Your your uh, phone knows where you've been and where photos are showing up. So this is written in the exit file of each photo. This is not necessarily the case. So there are some some cases when the photos uh, do not have exif uh, coordinates written into exif files. And this is our case, the case of the um, uh, Trimble UX5. It writes the, uh, the, the coordinates and the, the uh, orientation of the sensor uh, in the flight log. And the inertial measurement unit or, or IMU, you're going to see this shortcut a little bit. 
it accurately measures the orientation and it writes it into a text fly file. And this text file is uh, called flight log. So it contains the exterior orientation. We're gonna talk in this lecture later about exterior orientation, what does it mean? Here, I just wanna show you how that such a log looks like. So it's a simple uh, CSV or a t mm, TXT file with uh, the name, latitude, longitude, and then the exterior orientation of the photo. And it's how it looks like when we load it into the, um, into the software. Uh, ground control points coordinates. Here you have the Lake Wheeler field and uh, indicated where uh, are our ground control points. As you can see, they're pretty evenly distributed. Some are in the middle, most of them are uh, located on uh, on the edges of our uh, area so it will be pinned correctly into uh, into our data so they were measured uh, by GPS uh, and then uh, represented by the panels set before the flight what can also be done uh, the photo ID points so the distinguishable uh, places in the photos, like for example, um, corners of some buildings or uh, some uh, lines on uh, painted on the parking lot. They can be used as the photo ID points and can be surveyed later on. So they don't have to be surveyed before the flight uh, because the targets do not need to be set because the, the photo ID point is a target. It is important to know the, uh, the ground control points coordinate system or uh, as differently you can say that spatial reference system. What is this special reference system? Most of you already had it on some other GIS classes, but just for reminder, it defines how the two-dimensional projected map in your GIS is related to, to real places on Earth. So it's like a mathematical explanation how, uh, how we created a flat surface out of the pretty round Earth. And it is what you need to remember that it's crucial to know what is your data reference system. So if you surveyed the ground control points in certain reference system, you need to know what reference system is, is system it was. Uh, so there are multiple global map projection, projections, but what we mostly will be working with are uh, optimized for smaller areas because UAS can fly only over small areas, especially relatively small uh, compared to the size of the Earth. So there are different, two different types of coordinate reference system. One is a geographic coordinate system and one is projected coordinate system. There are many, many uh, spatial reference systems and uh, there are, they are usually distinguishable by, the, by their EPSG codes. And here you have a link you can open the website which has the description of each code, so each spatial refer reference system. And it's usually either four or five numbers and you can just remember those numbers and you know for sure which reference system you, you work with. So what's uh, important for us is how, what do we get after we process the data? So there are four basic outputs. One is an orthophoto, one is a digital surface model, then we also can have a point cloud and a 3D model. And I'm gonna talk, tell you, uh, talk to you a little bit about each. So this is what you can see. It looks like an aerial photo, but it's actually more. So this is uh, geometrically corrected so the scale is uniform. It's not just one photo, but it can be used as a map. It can, you can put a scale on it and you can measure distances and you can uh, compute, uh, make cartographic uh, calculations on this. It is a raster, so it consists of red 
green and blue bands if we are working with the RGB data. We can also have multiple bands if we have sensor that collects multiple bands. The next uh, output of the processing is a digital surface model. And it's crucial, crucial to understand what are we getting? Uh, what is the, surf the digital surface model? So there are multiple uh, uh, terms for DEN, DTN, DSM, you can be easily lost with them. So the basic thing to understand is that the DEN or DTM is a digital terrain model or digital elevation model and it, uh, it describes the surface of the earth without items that are on them, so represents the terrain elevation. The SM, digital surface model, it can be sometimes also uh, named as DEM because it also describes the elevation, but what's the difference? It is a representation of the elevation of everything that is on the earth. So this blue line here is the digital surface model. And what we are getting after the processing of the UAS data is the digital surface model. We cannot see uh, what's underneath the buildings or underneath the dense vegetation. The next uh, output is a point cloud. So this is the representation of the external, external surface of an object since DEM or DSM were sh uh, was showing us just the surface. The, uh, so each raster could have just one value. The uh, point cloud can show us in one location, there are multiple, can be multiple points. So it can show us the structure of the, um, of the survey uh, in this case, bridge or of the surveyed objects. If we are just surveying the earth, uh, the point cloud uh, will have one point uh, represented on uh, for one, one place of, on the earth. It's set of vertice vertices in the three-dimensional coordinate system. So this little donut is also a point cloud. Uh, the question is, is it a vector or a raster? So this is a basically a vector because it consists of vertices, but uh, as Dale Lutz once said, it's the badly behaved raster because on the point cloud, you can uh, perform a lot of the same uh, analysis as you perform on the, on the raster files. So first, what we talked about is uh, what do you get after the flight? So you get imagery, you get log, and you get the ground control coordinates. Then we talked about what are we getting at the end of the processing. So we're getting auto photo, digital surface model, point cloud, and 3D model. Now we're gonna uh, try to answer the question, how do we get there? How do we get from the bare data that we get from the UAS to the processing output? 